one thing I want to note is the use of rounding and decimals when you're using your calculator for this. So many calculators allow you to graph functions, find intersections, find zeros, and have those functions tied to a calculation page. So for example, these are screenshots from the TI Inspire CX. And one thing you want to watch for is remember that when we do our rounding, yes, we round to three decimal places when we're writing and at the very end, but we do not round the values for our intermediate steps. So while I can write a rounded three digit value for my bounds, when I actually do the integral, I need the full decimal, not the rounded decimal for the bounds. So make sure that you understand how you can take advantage of storing values into variables and things like that on your calculator to do this. So for example, the TI Inspire, if you click on to a variable, onto a value, so say I found this intersection and I click on this and it's highlighted, there is a dock button on the TI Inspire CX that brings up this menu. If you choose store, if it asks you what variable you would like, I always name my lower bound A. And then if I do the same thing with the second intersection, click on the X, hit the dock button on the TI Inspire, choose store, and then call it B. If I then go to the affiliated calculator page, I can just say the bound from A to B, and then my top function was the blue F1 of X, the bottom is the F2 of X, of F1 of X minus F2 of X, and it does everything for me, and I can round this value now for my answers. Again, when I'm writing my integral, I can write the integral from negative 1.265 to positive 1.265, of the top to cosine of x minus the bottom, x squared minus 1. Make sure you're subtracting all of the bottom. Writing this is okay, but I have to make sure for the calculation I'm using those full decimals to be able to get the value of 4.995. So make sure that you're able to do that with your calculator. If you have class with me, I'm happy. We, this is one of those things we will practice doing within the classroom when we're face to face. So then a uh, few slightly more complicated examples here. So we're asked to find the area between y equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 and y equals x. Looking at this function, I actually have two different parts to this. And what makes this different is what's top and what's bottom changes depending on which piece I look at. And they don't tell me which piece they are intending, so I have to assume they mean they want both pieces, so I want the entire area between those curves. So please note I do need to find my bounds because they don't tell me the bounds. This would be a calculator type problem, um, and I find that my intersection here is at negative 0.802 and again that's a rounded value that I'm writing but when I do my calculations I'm going to use the full decimals. This intersection is at 0 0.555 and this intersection is at 2.247. And what I do is I just anytime the top or bottom changes I just do a new integral. So I see this as I have two regions, one region where the black is on top and the red is on bottom, and another region where red is on top and black is on bottom. And so I'm going to split this up and say, well, for the first region, I have the integral from negative 0.802 to positive 0.555. The black on top is my cubic. Minus the red on bottom is the linear. And then I'm going to add on the area of the other region, which goes from 0.555 to 2.247. Here, the red is on top, which is my linear. That's not a negative x there. That's an x. Minus the bottom, my cubic. And 
And so I actually have two integrals, one for the first region, one for the second region, based on what's on top, what's on bottom. Type that into my calculator, and I got 2.766. Then what's typically the most challenging is here we're dealing with with respect to y. And oops. For this, I actually want to change to non-presentation mode with this so that I can actually manipulate some things. I want to find the area between y squared equals x plus 1 and y squared equals 3 minus x. And that's this region right here. But these aren't functions. So if I, and that's a big issue here, these aren't functions. So I could split these into functions and say, well, the y squared equals x plus 1 would be the same as y equals the positive square root of x plus 1 and y equals the negative square root of x plus 1, which would be the top red and the bottom red. And then y equals the positive square root of 3 minus x, which would be top black. I'm sorry, top, I have the color switched. Um, this would be the positive square root of x plus 1. This would be the negative square root of x plus 1. This would be the positive square root of 3 minus x, this would be the negative square root of 3 minus x. But then I have a region where the positive square root of x plus 1 is on top of the negative square root of x plus 1 from negative 1 to 1. And then another, it, there's, it just gets too complicated. So when we are dealing with things that are not functions, we can do what's called find the area with respect to y. And the idea of this is, is we turn the graph and say, well, these two relations are not functions with respect to x, but what if I say, instead of x is the independent variable and y is the dependent, let's switch them. Let's say y is the independent variable and x is dependent. Please note that I turned my graph. So I want to turn my graph 90 degrees. You can do this by turning your paper 90 degrees counterclockwise, or you can leave your paper where it is and turn your head to the right. I'm turning my page 90 degrees counterclockwise. This means, please note, my positive x's are now going up and my positive y's are going to the left. And I can now think of this as, well, I've got the black was the y squared equals x plus 1. Well, if x is the dependent variable and I isolate it, this is x equals y squared minus 1. In other words, it's a parabola opening up, because my x's now go up, but shifted down a unit of 1. The red was y squared equals 3 minus x. But if x is now dependent and I isolate the x, I get negative y squared plus 3, which is a parabola opening down, shifted up three units. And now it has become, find this area. And now I can see I've got the same thing on top. The red is always on top. The black is always on the bottom. So I have an integral. But now it's in terms of y's. So red is on top, so that's the negative y squared plus 3, minus the black is on the bottom, y squared minus 1, with respect to y. But now I need to know what do the y's go between. So I do need the intersection. So the y squared minus 1 has to equal the negative y squared plus 3. So 2y squared is equal to 4 y squared is equal to 2, so y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So here's the negative square root of 2 for the y's, and the positive square root of 2 for the y's, because our integral is everything is in terms of y. So now I can find this antiderivative, 
Well, let me do some simplifying of my integral integrand. So that's going to be 4 minus 2y squared, which gives me 4y minus 2 thirds y cubed from negative rad 2 to positive rad 2. So I've got 4 rad 2 minus 2 thirds rad 2 cubed minus negative 4 rad 2 plus n minus 2 thirds of all of negative rad 2 cubed. And here is my answer. This way, I didn't have to try to break things up into break relations into two pieces and then have multiple pieces for what's on top and what's on bottom. Doing it with respect to y meant I just had to get everything in terms of y. Again, this is great if what you're dealing with are not functions with respect to x.